Hmm. Oh, yeah, man. Is it Sunday? Is it Sunday morning already? Week 12 of the NFL season? Oh, my goodness. Well, unfortunately, it's going to be a... Uh, ratings will be down today because, of course, the Dallas Cowboys aren't playing. We played last Thursday, and they'll be down next week as well because we play on this Thursday night. But it's all good because we've got the Eagles versus Josh Allen, and I guess maybe, you know, Josh Allen, let's see if he can play like he does, you know, like on Madden. Yeah, he can be the Madden cover boy today. Man, I can't believe it's week number 12 of the NFL season. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This is a moment in time for the Dallas Cowboys to catch their breath. Because from here on out, the Cowboys have the opportunity to shut the trolls off. Because... The funny thing is, is they always seem to put a roadblock in front of the Dallas Cowboys. And bit by bit, we've been able to check it off. First, we were told, you know, Dak Prescott, turnover machine. You know, they can't win with Dak Prescott turning over the football. Check that off the list. Not turning over the football. Then it was Kellen Moore. You know, the Cowboys, uh, they're going to miss the boy wonder. The reason why Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense was so good was Kellen Moore. They're going to miss him because Mike McCarthy is old over the hill who just wants to run the football. And the first couple of weeks, it seemed like that was the case. It looked like we missed Kellen Moore. Does anybody even mention Kellen Moore? Do the talking heads even say anything about Kellen Moore anymore? I don't think they do do that. They don't. It's almost like he just disappeared into the vapors. Then it was, yeah, well, the offense, play calling, the clock management, those issues of Mike McCarthy. Well, seems like the play calling has been pretty good lately that the team's been able to thrive. Then it was, they didn't sign people to help them. They don't care about free agency. They don't have the same amount of talent as some of the other teams. Well, you're sitting here looking at all of a sudden, Jake Ferguson is playing really well. Schoonmaker. Oh, we'll get to the draft too. You know, uh, the, the, the tight end by committee seems to be working right now. The uh, Brandon Cooks, because they said, you know, Brandon Cooks, they're too stupid to use this guy. Well, that guy's heating up. And now you've got other guys that are beginning to. Jalen Tolbert's got 16 catches on the season, and, and even Michael Gallup. So now it's beginning to look like you've got some talent, or you've got a guy who's able to maximize the talent. So you can check that one off. Now it's been, they can't beat winning teams. Well, I will still say, and this is, yeah, and maybe this is nitpicking and all that, but they say the Cowboys did not beat a team that had a winning record. Well, they did with the New York Jets because the New York Jets did have a winning record the first week after beating the Buffalo Bills week one without Aaron Rodgers. And that team has actually beat the Eagles and done damage to most quarterbacks in the NFL that they've played with that defense. But that's okay. That's okay. Because here's the chance for the Cowboys to take away to take away another one of those roadblocks that they put in front of the Cowboys that they can't beat good teams. Well, you know what's going to happen if we beat Seattle on Thursday. Well, Seattle you know, it's Geno Smith and, you know, Pete Carroll's gotten old and, and you know that's coming. Or the San Francisco 49ers kind of beat him down, you know, this past week. And, uh, you, you know that's coming. You know it's coming. But this is the opportunity where we've got the gauntlet. We've got Seattle. We got the Eagles. We've got Buffalo. We got Miami. We got Detroit. Now, all of a sudden, the Cowboys have the opportunity to shut them up. And I dare say Dak Prescott has the opportunity 
to wrestle, wrestle the MVP conversation away over the course of the next two weeks. If the Cowboys beat Seattle, and, and mind you, all those out there that are saying, you know, well, Dak sucks. It, it, this is a regular season award. This is not a lifetime achievement award that looks at the totality of your career. This is who was the most valuable player of this year? Who was the most important one? Who had the best numbers? And typically it's a quarterback. Maybe this year, if Dak Prescott is the best quarterback, they'll end up giving it to somebody else. That, that'll probably be what'll happen. And they'll say, oh, well, Tariq Hill got 2,000 yards. We're going to give it to him. We're just not going to give it to Dak Prescott. It, it, it may be something like that. That would be probably the case. But if the Cowboys can destroy the Eagles... And Dak Prescott has another one of these games like he's been having the last few weeks. It's hard to argue because it seems like Jalen Hurts right now is, you know, the pick. Even though his season isn't going the way it did last year. Even though he's turning over the football. It's the way it is. Now we have an important game. This one is huge. If the Eagles, this is where the pressure is on all the Eagles. Because the Eagles, again, we need them to lose this game. They lose this game and then have to face the 49ers. All of a sudden, their nuts shrivel up. Shrinkage! Does she know about shrinkage? Because then that means the Cowboys with 10 days rest. The, hey, the, for once, the, the NFL did not do the Eagles any favors. They, they gave us a few extra days before we have to face them that second time. And that's going to be for all the marbles. So today... We're going to start out watching, of course. Uh, we'll be live streaming starting at 1 o'clock. Um, I'm going to be, if Cop Pizzle accepts, Cop Pizzle accepts my fanhood for the rest of the season of a Giant fan in honor of my good friend who's no longer with us. Rashid, I will be rooting for the New York Giants against New England. Now, you know, <laughs> this is the thing that's kind of crazy. This is the thing that's really kind of crazy. Um, I treat others the way I'd like to be treated. I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, and I love my team. I ride the highs and the lows with them. I give them my all like I try and do with everything in life. If I'm going to do something, I don't try to half-ass it. I give it my all. Be it working on a historic house, be it cooking dinner, be it trying to raise my kids, I do the best I can, and I never tire from trying to do the best I can. It's crazy because my friendship with Rashid as well with Daniel, as well as with David Wiley, as well as DMV or Miss Jackie, so many, you know, people, I go to the mat for them. And they get a place in my heart. And it's kind of crazy that, you know, when I said last night, because I said, and I didn't even think about it when I said it, I said, you know what, for Rashid, I'm so happy that the Giants beat the Commanders because that was the last football game that he saw. And for him to at least get that victory going out was beautiful. And I remember Rashid saying a couple times, and I'm sure you guys have heard him say it too, if you guys make the Super Bowl, if you guys make the Super Bowl, I'm going to root for you guys. And so I said last night, in honor of him, I'm going to root for the Giants for the rest of the year. Not even in the back of my mind until an Eagle fan came through being sarcastic like, oh, he's full of crap. He's only rooting for the Giants because they got to play us twice. I didn't even think about it. That wasn't even part of the equation. But it is true. And I dare say, when I think about it, it's funny when somebody tries to do something to you to make you feel small that it actually... Bring something good about it. Because that's kind of 
fitting the whole narrative. If the Giants beat the Eagles a game, that helps to open up the door for the Cowboys. Didn't even think. I, I honestly did not think about that. That opens the door for home field advantage. In the end, we can win and keep winning, but we need some help. And maybe my good buddy Rashid up there with Stuart Morrison and the football gods. Maybe they'll all smile down upon us. Maybe Jimmy Johnson finally getting to the ring of honor will help to open the door. I believe things in life just don't happen. They happen for a reason. And who knows? Maybe that's the case. So we'll be here watching the New York Giants against New England, and we'll be cheering for the Giants. And if you liked Rashid and want to honor him, the root for the Giants too. I'm not saying on a permanent basis for him. All right, good people. So I haven't seen this clip from ESPN, but they're basically saying, uh, Ryan Clark is saying the Cowboys are playing bully ball, which is interesting because they say that the Cowboys can't get into a street fight. At least that's what it was before. And maybe this is one of those times where you can say the Cowboys can be physical because they always said the Eagles are physical. The Cowboys are kind of finesse. And I like seeing physicality. I like bludgeoning the opponent, blooding their nose, bitch slapping them, so to speak. Let's listen into them and see what they had to say about it. If he played, they would win, and if he didn't, they lose. Right. I tell you, I actually go talk to coach before every game, and sure enough, I called him as he was talking to Jerry, and so I mentioned it, and of course, Jerry liked it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and at that point, my direction was just make sure we're up and the game was in hand, and so, uh, the first, what, the touchdown, two CD, and then following two-point conversion. If you watch, I'm kind of like, I is it time? Can we do it? I'm like, no, we'll get another one. Uh, and sure enough, right after the, the one to Terp, was like, yeah, let's go for it. And so, and it was good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> uh, Ryan Clark joining us now. And, and uh, so has Dak Prescott been good since that 49er game. Well, what are you seeing with Dak and the Cowboys last, whatever, five, six games they've played? I mean, I mean, the first thing you're seeing is confidence. I think secondly, you're seeing that Dak Prescott is willing to use his legs, willing to create time in the pocket, which he hasn't been comfortable doing since his lower body injury a few years back. And then you think about the fact that they've now decided to target C.D. Lamb, treat him as a number one, as Dan Orlovsky asked for weeks ago. But then you're seeing the other guys come along. The first pass early on in the game, it was about Michael Gallup. It was about Jake Ferguson. We saw Brandon Cooks get involved. And then that allowed C.D. Lamb to get involved in the game more organically. And now with Dak Prescott playing at such a high level, the defense can do what it does best, which is pin its ears back, mm -hmm. rush the quarterback, and also create turnovers. But it still doesn't matter until we see this happen in a big game, until we see mm -hmm. who Dak Prescott and his offense can be in critical situational football moments. Yes, he played amazing against the Philadelphia Eagles, but it was late in that game with he and Mike McCartney with time management making the right decisions, putting this team in the right place to execute. We know that they can score points. We know that Dak Prescott can play top-tier football at the quarterback position. But is it going to matter and is it going to count when you play the best teams in the most important moments? Mike T., you think they've actually shown something during this stretch that makes you more confident going forward when they do play those good teams again? Yeah, absolutely. It's how do they get better from within? It's young tight ends like Luke Schoomaker, Jake Ferguson, What's remarkable is a year ago we were talking about is it Jalen Tolbert, is it Michael Gallup? Those guys are actually afterthoughts, guys. Ten different Cowboys caught passes yesterday. They are much more diverse on offense than they've been. And then on the other side of the ball, they overcame some big injuries. 
We've already talked about Deron Bland and Marquis Spell, but going back to offense here, that seam route to Jake Ferguson. Great throw. Yeah, that's better than what Dalton Schultz could have done. They're getting better at the tight end position, mm -hmm. and outside, again, they have a lot more volume than they've had in the past. A very good performance by Dallas Cowboys. I love the toss plays in their run game. Dak threw the ball downfield well. RC, you talk about his eyes. I think the the or excuse yes, me, Dan his legs, saying good I think the best Dak. part of it is it's not just running. It's running and trying to go create mm. big plays, you know, with his eyes downfield. And I think that's kind of the thing that I've certainly lost sight of. Like this, first of all, great block by Tony Pollard. Climbs outside the left of his pocket. Goes to throw. Nope, not there. All right, so that's, that's the right decision in that moment to go use your legs, keep your eyes downfield. Escapes to the right of the pocket. Now, watch how his eyes stay downfield. He's not just trying to get away from bad. He's trying to go create good for their offense. Obviously a nice bounce there, but these two are awesome. Again, climb from the left side or up the left side of the pocket, eyes downfield. This ball is gonna be snapped from the 38 yard line going down inside the 10, that's 20 plus yards. Then now this ball is gonna be snapped at the 15. He climbs or evades to the left. And this is an absolute rope kind of across his body as he's reset mm -hmm. for another 20 plus yards. We're talking 40 to 50 yards of offense, strictly because the quarterback Got rid of the, got away from bad, and then went and created good. Really, really good win. Really, really good wow. win. Let's 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 have this conversation, RC, Mike T. Here we and go, Dan. In the context of like the college football playoff, if if the Cowboys if we were doing that, it would be eye test versus resume. Because we consider and say, man, they look like a good football team. That's not surprising. They beat nobody. They've beat absolutely nobody. Yep. Here, the, see, the last yep. three teams that they yep. played against, 28th on defense, 31st on defense, Again, 32nd the on defense. the The roadblock. So good performances, but we, like, we don't right. know anything different. Dan, we're on the precipice of yeah, them but this is the two months. Go ahead, RC. No, but, but, but this is the conversation. I actually tweeted it yesterday, and then I had to remember something. I tweeted about the Miami Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys, two of the mm -hmm. best teams in all of football, yeah. or at least we believe that. Neither of those teams have beaten a good mm -hmm. football team. Now, what they do is they play bully ball, right? When you're playing a team that you're better than, when you're playing a team that your okay. roster is more complete than, then you blow them out, right? And that's what gets us excited. That's what makes mm -hmm. us feel bully like ball. these teams can be teams to win a championship. But you also think about the Dallas Cowboys playing down to the Arizona Cardinals early on this year. We right. feel like they've well, the moved Eagles past to the Jets. Like we won't see those performances anymore. But are we going to see performances that allow you to beat the Philadelphia Eagles? Are we going to see performances that allow you to beat the San Francisco 49ers? Because we have to remember mm -hmm. that two of the losses that the Dallas Cowboys have are to two of the teams you probably have to beat right. to be a Super Bowl champion, to be yeah. an NFC champion. And so that's nope, what no we have to figure there. out about the Dallas Cowboys. When all the chips are on the table and it's great on great, can you be good enough? Can you execute well enough on those days to be the victor in the end? But RC, that's where I would push back a little bit because I do see greatness. I see greatness in the last two months that we're going almost on two months, guys. They've lost one game, and that was to Philadelphia literally by a handful of plays. That was a heavyweight fight, and they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Eagles. And oh, they're going to get them in yeah. Dallas, and, and this Dallas Damn Cowboy up. team is better. Damn, we got we're also oh. going on an RC, entire RC. season where the Philadelphia Eagles have only lost one game. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. the, the San Francisco 49ers have never lost a game whole since Brock Purdy. Has All right. So you, you see that now before it was Dak Prescott's interceptions. It was the play calling. Now, yeah, they can't be. That is the talking point. That is the talking point that the Cowboys can't beat the winning teams. Well, here's the chance for the Dallas Cowboys to shut all of them up and then try and find something else to talk about. Because they can't say Dak Prescott can't play. They can't say that the Cowboys are soft. They can't say that Mike McCarthy is an idiot coach. They can't say it was Kellen Moore. They can't say a lot of things that the Cowboys have X'd off. All right, good people. We are three hours, less than three hours away from kickoff of today's games. I'm going to do some more work over here on the, uh, I'm, I'm working on, on my built-in cabinets and things here in the studio. So maybe by the time the Super Bowl gets here, we'll actually have this space up here done. As always, I appreciate you guys and go Giants. I think I just threw up in my mouth. I, I think.